This episode is sponsored by Pergear. If you'd like to purchase this gimbal, you can use the link down below and you can get $5 off when you use the discount code RALPH. In my hands today, I have the Hohem iSteady Pro 2 action gimbal. This is the gimbal for action cameras like the GoPros and Osmo actions and whatnot. Uh, this is actually just an empty box and the actual gimbal is right here. And I did a review of the GoPro Hero 7 Black a while ago and I had discovered that it had a lot of potential for being a great vlogging camera, not just an action camera. Uh, because in terms of camera specs, it's very comparable to any smartphones nowadays. It can shoot 4K and very high frame rates, it can do HDR, time lapse, time warp, or hyperlapse, or whatever you call them. The internal audio was massively improved, and the stabilization was probably the biggest upgrade compared to the previous generations. And the stabilization was good, it was great for quick shortcuts of people riding a bike or a skateboard, but it was still a digital stabilization nevertheless, and it was never really as good as a gimbal or an optical stabilization. You know, it's okay to show some movement when you're trying to portray some motion, but sometimes the footage became a little unnatural and warpy, and uh, especially in low light, the stabilization struggled quite a bit. So the gimbal can just take the stabilization to the next level, but that's not the only reason you might want to get this gimbal. You know, we all love GoPros and other action cams for their small size and lightweight and the ruggedness. We can basically take them anywhere. But gimbals are usually a much more delicate equipment compared to the action cameras. But this one is actually splash proof. It's rated at IPX4, I believe. So um, I wouldn't necessarily take it underwater, but it can still handle splashes and you can take it out on a rainy day. And also the best part, this only costs $99, so it's actually not that much more than any GoPro branded selfie sticks. Uh, so inside the box, it comes with this carrying case and also uh, the, it comes with two cables, one for charging the gimbal itself and also another one to connect the gimbal and the GoPro so you can charge the GoPro while you're filming, so that's pretty cool. It also comes with this tiny little tripod legs, so what you have to do is you just screw that in at the bottom and now you can just quickly set it on top of flat surfaces and you can shoot your time lapses and stuff like that. The gimbal fits inside the carrying case while the GoPro is mounted on it, so that's pretty nice. And Pergear also sent me this extendable selfie stick, so that's pretty cool. And to be completely honest, this isn't probably the best timing for this review because GoPro just announced their Hero 8 like yesterday. And from what I've seen, I can't really confirm this yet, but I think the Hero 8 is slightly taller than the Hero 7 cameras. So um, it may not work with this gimbal, but um, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, but if you have Osmo Action, that also works with this gimbal. And the Hero 7 Black's price just dropped down to 329, I believe. So if you get the Hero 7 Black, you can also get this gimbal for the similar price you would pay for the Hero 8 camera. So that's really your choice. But like I said, this gimbal works with many other action cameras and the stabilization is not the only reason you might want to buy a gimbal. So apart from just making your videos less shaky, it will help you uh, control the camera a lot easier and it will just help you get different camera angles much easier compared to on a selfie stick. Just to kind of quickly demonstrate how good the stabilization is, I shot a quick video of me just walking in my backyard with the GoPro in my hands. And it does a pretty decent job when I'm just walking at normal speed, but when I'm sprinting at full speed, the footage becomes a lot more unstable. And then I shot the same video now on the gimbal. And as you can see, the footage became a lot more smooth, but you see a much bigger difference when I start to run. And here you can see the video side by side and the difference becomes much more obvious. For such a small gimbal that's really not any bigger than a selfie stick, it really does a good job stabilizing your videos. And to go over the hardware a little bit, um, you know, it's really not that much different than any other gimbals nowadays. You know, a lot of people are familiar with gimbals by now. And you know, it has the trigger on the 
outer side and on the front there is the joystick and the power button and the, another button for changing to different modes and one slider for turning the camera side to side and on the left side there are two ports for power in and out to either charge the gimbal or charge the GoPro and also there's a place to mount an optional accessory where you can mount your smartphone so you can look at the smartphone screen while you're filming. On the other side, there are, are four LED lights to indicate the power level. And at the bottom, as I mentioned, there's a place to mount your tripod or a selfie stick. There's actually one design element that kind of confused me a little bit at the beginning. So as you can see right now, my GoPro is mounted on the left side of the gimbal. And if you look at the packaging, it's actually supposed to go on the other side. So, uh, but the problem is if you mount it like this, the gimbal actually covers up the power button. So um, that was kind of annoying. And there are two ways to fix this issue. And one way to deal with it is to mount the GoPro on the other side like I have, and this works just as well. Uh, but the problem with that is that now I've covered up the port so I can't charge the GoPro when I'm filming. And another way to deal with this is to use the voice control on your GoPro to turn it on and off. But personally, I think I prefer this because I I don't think I'll be charging my GoPro that often when I'm filming and I don't like having cables laying around on the gimbal and also because my GoPro is mounted this way this bar that goes across uh, the GoPro here kind of stops the GoPro from slipping out because my camera lens is right in the middle here and because of this layout now my camera lens is aligned with my handle so the GoPro is perfectly centered. The mounting mechanism is pretty simple. You just slide in your GoPro and you tighten it with these two screws at the top and the bottom. Um, I wish these screws were a little bigger, but you know, it's manageable and it works and it's simple. And so it's pretty easy to use. And right out of the box, the gimbal worked pretty well. It didn't require any calibration or filling with any screws or anything like that. And the gimbal works well enough. So in most cases, you may not even have to worry about the controls. You can just use the gimbal and use the trigger, double tap it to bring it to the original position. But there are four different modes you can use while filming and that can be activated by tapping on the back button here from one to four times. And the different modes are labeled on the back so you don't forget, but they're initials. So it's kind of hard to figure out what they are, but once you just kind of play around with them, it's pretty easy to figure out. So you single tap on the button and now you're in PF, uh, which means uh, you're in pan following. So what that means is when you move your gimbal up or down, the camera is going to still face forward. But when you move side to side, the camera is going to follow your hands and you double tap on the button. And now you're in PTF, which means it's pan and tilt following. So that means when you move up or down, the camera also follows. And also when you turn side to side, your camera still follows. But when you twist your hand, it's going to keep the camera steady. And when you triple tap, you are in AL. And that is uh, all locked. So that means no matter what you do, your camera will always face the same direction. And lastly, there's the quadruple tap. And that is AF and AF means all following and inception. So this is basically a freeform mode. So the camera is always going to follow your hands no matter which direction you move to. So if you twist your hand, the camera is going to follow. And if you tilt up, the camera is going to follow up and down and to the sides. So say you're skiing or snowboarding down the mountain and you're going up and down these slopes. And if you want the camera to move with you instead of just standing perfectly still, because that can be quite boring, uh, that's the mode you might want to use. There's also the Hohum app you can download to control your gimbal on your phone and also to fine tune your controls on the gimbal. And you can also set up panning time lapses so you don't have to be manually controlling the gimbal yourself. The battery on the gimbal lasts about 12 hours. Uh, I haven't had a chance to record anything for 12 hours straight, so I can't really test that, but uh, it seems to be holding up pretty well. I've been using this for a few days and it's still at four LED lights, so that's pretty good. And considering the GoPro battery doesn't last that long, 
the gimbal is gonna still function after you swap out the battery like seven or eight times. So far for $99, I'm pretty happy with the product and I highly recommend it to anybody who has the GoPro Hero 7s or the Osmo Actions. So I think that's pretty much it for today. So thank you for watching and I hope this is helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.